second lesson today comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. This will also serve as today's sermon text. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You guys like stories? Yeah, what, what type of stories are your favorite? What stories do you like to listen to? Huh? Fairy tales. Fairy tales? Any other type of stories? History stories? Yeah, those are all good stories. Anyone like sports stories? Yeah. Animal stories? Yeah. There's, a, there's thousands of different types of stories out there, different types of tales. Usually the ones that we like the most, they always seem to have something similar about them, and that is there's usually a, a hero in the story. And then there's something, either a person or an event or a thing that's trying to stop them from achieving a goal that they they certainly have in their life. And, and it's usually some kind of enemy that's strong, that's quite the equal to the hero, so that there is a big struggle between the two. And a lot of people think the Bible is just like any other story. They assume that it's God or Jesus versus the devil, and that they're an equal fight, and that if Jesus needs to defeat the devil in order to win our salvation, but the devil is strong and Jesus might lose. But is that what the Bible teaches us? How, when compared to Jesus, how strong is the devil? Weak. In fact, he doesn't even stand a chance. In the gospel lesson we just heard, Jesus wouldn't even let demons speak. No, they have to listen to Jesus. The devil has to listen to he is that much stronger. In fact, really, the Bible doesn't make a really good story if you're looking for some kind of entertainment value because the story was over from the time God said, I'm going to bring a Savior to crush the devil's head. It was already taken care of, which is great news for us. Because that means we, that means we don't have to fear the devil because God is on our side. While we can't take the devil off the word, so weak against him, we don't have to worry about taking him on by ourselves. Because God is surrounding us with his love and his power and his grace. And so we never need to fear, is the devil going to take me away? Is the devil going to drag me to hell? Is he going to hurt me? God is right there with you. And he will protect you. And he is so much stronger, it's not even close. And so while there may be no entertainment now, God did that on purpose so that we could have confidence that this is going to happen. We are saved. We are going to heaven because God said so and the devil can do nothing about it. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for using your strength in our behalf. Thank you for sending your son to show your strength by completely destroying the devil in every way. Thank you for your protection as we continue to live in this world. We know the devil will tempt us. We know the devil will try to lead us away. But as long as we remain with you, he can't touch us. And for that, we give you our eternal thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So what do you know about that enemy, the devil? You probably already know that he's evil. 
probably already know that he's the one who led Adam and Eve to bring sin into the world, which is what we're constantly fighting against. Did you know that he was perfect at one time, that he was an angel that God created, and yet somehow, and God doesn't tell us how, but somehow he became evil. He decided he was going to try to rebel against God. He wanted God's position, at least that's what seems to be the case. And he lost. Did you know he's the reason why hell exists? There was no hell at creation. God didn't create it. It wasn't meant to be there. But then the devil and his fellow angels, the demons, they rebelled and God had to put them somewhere, so he, put, he created hell for them. And it was just meant for them. That is, until sin entered the world. There's a lot that we can say about our enemy, the devil. Peter calls him a roaring lion looking to devour us, never taking a day off, always searching. And so there's one thing more we can say about him. He's not our friend. He is our enemy. He has no pity on you. He does not care about you. He does not have your best interest at heart. But he's really good at convincing you he does. He's really good at convincing all of us that he's our friend. He's really good at leading us to walk away from our God. Well, how do we defend ourselves? How do we fight back? The devil has tremendous power. He's so much stronger than us. Where can we go? Well, Peter today reminds us we must run to Christ. We must run to him. Always rely on him. In fact, Peter even calls it living under the mighty hand of God, which is just simply another way of saying always reliant on God, always trusting in him, always going to him, never once trying to do anything without him. In your life. Peter was told this. Peter wrote this. Particular message. About how to defend ourselves. Against the devil. To, to many Christians scattered throughout. Modern day Turkey. The apostle Paul. Started many of these churches. In his first missionary journey. And now Peter is writing to them. To give them encouragement. Because. These people were being persecuted for what they believed, and they were being threatened in every kind of way during this time in history. And so they were wondering, should we even be Christians anymore? Should we stick it out? Is it worth hanging on to God? Is he really going to help us? And Peter was simply just pointing out to them throughout his letter that this is just a trick of their enemy, the devil. The devil's main goal is to try to get God out of your life. And so he's going to get you to try to question God. He's going to allow, he's going to bring bad things into your life. He's going to persecute you. He's going to make fun of you. He's going to try to do whatever he can to make your life as uncomfortable as possible. So that you begin to look at God and wonder, does he even love me? Because the devil knows that once we start questioning God, the better the chances we'll start walking away. And the devil knows that while we remain under the mighty hand of God, we're safe. But when we leave, he, he's so much stronger. And he knows he will win. And he's just waiting for that window to pounce. Now, of course, as we look at our lives, and we think about our lives under the mighty hand of God. How long does the devil really have to wait for us to walk away? How often do we, 100% throughout the whole day, at every single moment, completely rely on God? How many times throughout the day do we maybe think, I can handle this without him? I should go to him in prayer, but you know what? I'm not going to bother him with this problem. Or I'm going to try to figure this out on my own without once considering. Is this anything that God says about this? Then I'm going to make a really big decision in life that is going to affect my future, and I'm, but I don't need to worry what God feels about it. 
Is there moments that happen, or are we always reliant on him Well, we know the answer? We're not. And we would like to think, you know, while the devil waits for us to try to handle things on our own, that it should take maybe once, that should be like maybe once a month we mess up or once a week, but it's not even close, right? It's how many times in a single moment do we walk away from our God? How many times in a single moment we don't rely on him, that we don't put God first, that we try to do things on our own, and that's because we don't remain humbled by our God. We have this sinful pride that wants to do everything on our own, thinks that we can do everything on our own, thinks that we can actually breathe on our own without God's help. And the truth is, we can't. We can't do anything without Him. We're the reason why, He's the reason why we exist, and He's the reason why we are saved. He's the reason why we can say heaven is our home. He's the reason why we can say anything is in our lives, whether it's possessions, or of his spiritual possessions. Everything comes from God. And yet we still find ourselves thinking, I don't need him. Or I'm not going to use him. Or I'm not going to rely on him. And that's just perfect for the devil. Peter describes him as a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He talks about him as constantly roaring. He doesn't take a day off. He's always working. And while the devil can't be in all places at all times because he's only an angel, he has plenty of allies. He has his demons, but he also has our sinful nature, and he also has the world, and he's backing that up with all his might and all his power. And he's just waiting for us to go stand alone, much like if you watch a nature documentary, seeing that one animal that goes off on its own, and that's the one the lions go after waiting for us to be just like that. But the devil's smart. He's clever. He knows that we have a very forgiving God, a God who loves us dearly, a God that if we, when we fall into sin, we can run to him and we can ask for forgiveness and he will forgive us, he will restore us, he will make us strong, he will put us back together every single time. And so the devil knows that if I get him to sin, which I get him to sin a lot, I know I need to do more. Because God will just forgive them. No, I need them to think God won't forgive them. And so once you sin, once he gets you to sin, do something that you're not supposed to do, that's when he'll turn on the guilt. And he'll start accusing you. He says, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you said that to your parents. I can't believe you went to that site. I can't believe you let this substance take you over. I can't believe you thought that. I can't believe you did any of that. Oh, don't go to God. He's not going to forgive you. That's, that's too bad. I mean, think of the shame. You can't tell anyone about this. In fact, you should probably separate yourself from everyone. Don't talk to your friends anymore. No. If they found out what you did, they, they wouldn't be your friends anyway. You're doing them a favor. Just go. And your family, oh man, if they knew what you did, they would disown you. So just walk away. Don't tell them why, just walk away. And you definitely can't go back to church. God's definitely throwing you in hell. You're done. You did that. I can't believe you did that. You know what? It's just best to just live life. Separate yourself from everyone. Go do your own thing. Live life to the fullest because you're going to go to hell anyway. So you might as well enjoy life all you can because you're just going to be with me in the end. And here's the problem. Many, including us, fall for it. What's a sin you're still wondering? Did God forgive me? What's a sin in your life that you still think about going? That one, I can't believe I did that one. Can't believe I thought that. Can't believe I said that. I hope God forgives me. I hope I'm saved from that one. That's just the devil accusing you. Telling you that you're not worthy of forgiveness, which we know we're not. We know that truth. But sometimes we believe that God still won't forgive us. Even though he promises us that. We think God won't keep his promise. 
And so we separate ourselves from God. There, I don't have the stats, but there's plenty of them out there that where many people are, are saying that we're probably, at this moment in history, people are at the, feel the loneliest that they, that they ever felt. Mental problems are going through the roof, anxiety, depression. And it's not just the clinical ones, it's people actually just, they're feeling this constant pressure, they're feeling alone, and, and we wonder why. Why now? Could it not be because a lot of people are believing the lie? You can't be part of that group anymore because of what you've done, because of who you are. You can't go back to God, you have no relationship with Him. How stressful it must be to try to live life without God. To feel that you have to completely rely on yourself and no one else. How much pressure do people put on their own shoulders to try to achieve something that they can't achieve on their own? How often do we forget that God just, God plainly says, cast all your anxieties. And when the word for cast, he's saying, pile them up. So don't put just one problem, stack them. Just stack them as high as you possibly can, but give them all to me. And yet we so often think we can't because we believe the lie. Just like the devil would want. And he wants nothing more than to see one of God's children fall. But we don't need to fall. And it's not because we can do anything. We really aren't stronger than the devil. We can't, st we can't stand up to him on our own. We will never win. But we got one who has won. And he's called the God of all grace. And he's the one who told us to cast all our anxieties on him. There's a, the reason why God says you shall have no other gods is because he's the only one who truly cares about you and is able to take you to heaven. He cares about you perfectly in every way. And so he wants us to be only focused on him. He wants us to run to him even when we've committed the sin we think no one can forgive. He wants us to go to him so that he can take it from us. So that he can bear the consequences. So that we don't have to. And we know we can because he did it. He went to the cross. And he died on it. And he suffered hell. But then he rose. Showing us that the devil was no match. And even more so, think about this. God told the devil what he was going to do. I'm going to send a savior to crush your head. And throughout the Old Testament, he revealed how it was going to happen. He's going to come, man and God. Emmanuel is coming. And he is going to suffer and die on a cross. And he is going to be forsaken. He's going to go to hell. Throughout the Old Testament, God laid out the plan. This is what he's going to do. And the devil could do nothing about it. Oh yes, he, he tempted him in the wilderness. And he attacked him with demons. And he even sent his own disciples after him to try to convince him that he shouldn't go to the cross. And not once did Jesus falter because there was no match. It wasn't even close. There was no suspense. It was over before it even began. God won. And he won easily. And he won for you so that you can be in heaven. Because he wins, we have won. Because he credits his righteousness to you. He credits his perfect life to you. That's why we never need to feel guilt of any sin. Because God doesn't even look at it. He doesn't even consider it. He looks at you like he looks at Jesus, a perfect child who will receive his inheritance, eternal life in heaven. God knows that the devil is going to throw everything he has at us. And sometimes it's going to hurt. 
But God promises us that as long as we run to him, stick with him, he will undo the devil's hurt. He will rebuild us. He will make us firm. He will strengthen us. He will put us back together piece by piece through his forgiveness and grace. That's his promise to you. And he never breaks a promise. He is never and he will never. And he promises that when you run to him, he will forgive you, he will hold you, he will protect you, so that you never need to fear anything, including the devil. Let's keep running to Christ. Let's put all our trust in him. Let's live under his mighty hand and be humble and know that we must rely on him for everything. Because we know he cares about us. And we know that he will protect us. So that in the end, we will be in heaven. Free from any more attacks from the devil. Amen. Please rise.